Look at the little chick. <laughs> Chicks. Right. So we have the charger fully on and functional. I've um, I've plugged that into the mains, um, into the mains power, and I've got the negative and the positive. I don't know if you can see it, but down there I've connected it up to the to the charger this way, and I've wired and I've unplugged and plugged this side in series. So now both strings of batteries are now in parallel, so that it is running up to it is running. Um, 60 volts instead of 120 volts and uh, so that's that's providing me with that's providing me with the ability to charge using the original G-Wiz charger now I'm <laughs> I don't know if I will have a second passenger in this car so I'm debating on just putting the mounting the charger there but we'll see at the moment it's just going to be a portable lump that I take in and out with a couple of plugs um, until I find somewhere suitable to mount it because it's just such a bulky old thing <laughs> Um, I'm sure I can get 120 volts set up at some point instead but um, for the time being that functions and it gives me the ability to charge up my car at the house and I've just got a test now that I, I've plugged all of this back in here which is the uh, modification that I did a while ago in order to be able to charge up to 60 to the max charge that this charger will put out which is something like 60 66.45 and uh, or 65 I forget but uh, hopefully that will charge it up to that point and uh, and that will function as I need it to for the time being so um, progress now I've just got to work out why the inverter was stopping drive uh, I have a feeling there's a couple of options one of them is that it's overheating under there, which I highly doubt it because there is ventilation under there. Um, the other option is under here. Now, um, going up that steep climb, I wonder if the motor actually overheated and it needed time to cool down. Um, I know there used to be a fan fixed onto this motor in the past, and I don't know if that was, um, that's probably because it was under the bonnet. So um, my concern was that under the back there where there's that close, I can't show you it now because the wheels are on, but where there's that, where it's leaning right close up against the um, back air vent, I wonder if that was what was, that's causing a lack of airflow around the back of the motor. Um, so we'll have to see. Uh, worst case scenario, I'll, I'll try and fit a fan, perhaps somewhere on this side that will just blow air straight at the motor. Um, we'll have to see, we'll have to see. Um, it might be okay and it was just a fluke <laughs> event, but I don't know. I'm asking a few people who know about this particular motor and inverter and we'll see if we can figure out what it is. Now, so that I don't have to pull the batteries out of there, I'm also trying to find a connection. Um, instead of the right angle, which would make it a bit unsteady, I'm thinking of trying to find a 15 pin plug that will go straight into that and then it will bring the cable out here and then I can plug in the adapter and the um, USB out here for doing some monitoring check temperatures and all that while I'm driving so uh, yeah that's that for now I'm just charging it up seeing how well it charges and uh, after that uh, it's just kind of ordering a cable and seeing if we can figure out what's going on with the inverter the good news is that the charger is working and um, the bad news is is that without the active fan on here that was getting so so hot I can't even barely touch that right now so um, I don't know if I want to risk it getting that hot I don't know if that's normal of this charger because I've never actually put my hand underneath it when it was going before um, chance it's okay but we'll see now if we have a look at this dial here as you can see before it was um it was down at 59 volts now it's up at 61.6 .6. and that will go all the way up to 66 uh technically once once i solve the cooling issue on this charger i thought that turning it up this way might be enough to let the heat go but i think i'm going to need to get an active fan 
on top of this. Now that's, uh, but it is good news, at least I can charge my battery packs quite easily. Um, yeah, I just got to resolve, just got to resolve that heatsink. Now, there's a chance it may be okay because my chargers on the other car, the wires get so, so hot, you can barely touch them too. So, um, there is a chance that this may be, this may be okay. But, um, I just want to find out first um, a bit more about that before I kind of just leave it going so um, yeah that's 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 it for now that's the charger that's the charger working and uh, I'll either install it somewhere or I'll keep it portable and just drop it in the car when I need to when I need to charge up so because local journeys I don't really need it on board so uh, yeah that's it that's it um, I've got the cable ordered I've got the cable ordered for that 15 serial port in there, 15 pin, and once that comes I can start looking at some programming information without pulling everything out to get to the inverter. So here is my makeshift casing for the fins to hopefully ensure that it stays warm. So um, I copied a similar way that the other, um, that the original thing used, and that was creating a really um, thin area where the fan blows the air through here. Um, so I've made a frame like that and then around this side I've mounted I've mounted the old fan that was in the side that tube. So you've got the same fan that goes in there. Now um, if I connect 48 volt back up it's wired in such a way that once that's connected the fan comes on with the 12 volt off of the charger and um, it's all in one so uh, excuse the messy wiring on here that's it's all protected either way but that's the um that's the modification for the uh, charger to make sure that it charges up to max um charges up to 66 point 64.5 or something like that uh, so yeah let's get this switched on and see if it's functional so there we have it it is completely working now because of that whole ledge just here there's a chance that could just sit on top of my shelf whenever I put it into charge um, so that could work quite well um, but yeah so that's that's all plugged in down there 48 volt feed is in fan is running um, charger is on. There's a problem that we keep having at the moment actually, whenever I plug the charger in it trips the RCD in the house uh, almost all the time. Once I flip the switch on in the house it runs perfectly well so I don't know what what's causing that. Maybe a bad earth because sometimes it does it with that car as well. Um, because what, what they've done is they've, they've put a lead here which is like 25-30 meters all the way up to the house so whenever you first start up it might be putting a lot of current through it and causing it to trip or it might just be a bad earth but there we go the air's the air's coming out of there quite well that's keeping that should keep the charger that should keep the charger cool so um that's it for today i have worked on the charger and i have got that functioning so i'm just going to charge the car up now and just make sure that it gets it gets up to um, gets close to 61 60 64 or 65 I forget what I'm charging it up to <laughs> um, ah, I forget I forget what it charges up to but either way um, I'm just gonna make sure that it does do that and I think it is already there because it wouldn't have gone over 60 volts if the uh, if that little device in there wasn't working properly so um, it's already gone over 60 volts so I'm pretty certain it will take it all the way up to um, it's around 65, I forget the actual figure without looking at the manual. So yeah, that's it for today and um, hope you enjoyed the video. And that is my battery bank wired in parallel and charging off the original charger for the time being until I get a 120 volt system put in which is going to be a bit more expensive. So um, for now, this works.